Good morning, class. Welcome back to your subject, Computer System Servicing. Today, we'll discuss a new topic under the third core competency of CSS. Before we start, let me just remind you of some of the guidelines that you need to follow in order for you to have a smooth learning experience. First, make sure to follow the weekly home learning plan. You can find the learning plans for each subject on the envelope that is being sent to you every week. Next, be guided in our lesson using your learning activity sheets. Third, make sure to complete the given tasks and submit it on the required date. And last, set your priorities and time management. So to start, let us first have a review of the previous lesson, which is about IP addressing. Okay, now I've prepared a short um, activity that you need to answer, and it's titled, Guess the Word. Using the clues from the image, you must be able to identify the terms related to IP addressing. Let's see the first word. If you answered subnet, then you are correct. A subnet or subnetwork is a logical subdivision of an IP network that practice of uh, dividing a network into two or more networks. So that's called subnetting. So next, okay. Check the image out and use them as clues. Okay, were you able to guess the correct answer? The answer to this one is IP address. Okay, an IP address is the um, unique numerical label assigned to a device within a computer network. Okay, next. Okay, the answer to this is Network. In computer networks, a uh, network is, consists of two or more uh, network devices connected to each other to share uh, resources such as files and printers. Okay, were you able to get all the answers correctly? If you did, then you did a great job and it also means that you're ready for our next lesson. Okay. So we've talked about networks, IPs, and network resources for us to be able to maximize the full potential of these things. Of course, we should be able to manage them properly. Now, that would lead us to our next lesson. Our next lesson is all about uh, server computing. So this will be sort of an introduction to server computing. So by the end of the lesson, um, all the learners are expected to learn the basic concepts of uh, server computing. They should be able to identify which is the client and which is the server on a network. And uh, the third one is um, to be able to name the different types of servers. Okay, so to start with our lesson, I have prepared a short video um, that you need to watch and then We'll um, try and discuss about the about this video after we've watched it. Coming up on how do they do it? The hundred billion dollar website. How does Facebook store the profiles of more than one in seven people on Earth? Facebook is nothing short of a phenomenon. The world's largest social networking site, it was valued at over $100 billion and boasts over a billion users. But handling the profiles, photos, and messages of more than one in seven people on the planet calls for technology on a simply staggering scale. So, how do they do it? 
When you've got more users than there are cars in the world, one of the biggest problems is storage. The storage in your laptop could fit in your hand. Here, they need something bigger. In Prineville, Oregon, the landscape is dominated by a monster data center of 300,000 square feet. It's like having a memory chip the size of three football fields, and it cost hundreds of millions of dollars to build. This is where your information is stored, in cutting-edge servers and massive memory banks, with data flying between them at the speed of light through over 21 million feet of fiber optic cable. Ken Patchett is the general manager. When you type in facebook.com, your request goes to the open internet, and that internet lands right here. And from right here, we request from one of the Facebook servers your profile and all the information associated with it. Our data centers work and compile all that information and then send it back to you right across the open internet again. And all of that happens in milliseconds. If you've ever wanted to visualize the internet, then these never-ending rows of servers are a fine illustration. Some people consider the internet a cloud as if it's floating around in the sky, but it's not. It's a real physical thing. The internet is a physical building just like this, interconnected through miles and miles of fiber and cable all throughout the world. And all of these buildings can talk to each other and share data back and forth. Nearly 2.5 billion people have internet access worldwide, each spending 20% of their online time social networking and uploading hundreds of millions of photos, messages, and updates every day. With all that activity, even this gigantic data center is running out of space. So construction crews are already working hard to increase capacity. But with online activity on this scale, they'd better get a move on. Okay, that's the end of our three minute video. Now, uh, what do you think is the video all about? Yes, the video is about Facebook and how it provides service to the billions of users around the world. Now I have prepared another short illustration for you to watch. To better explain it, I prepared a short illustration of how websites like Facebook and Google is connected to us, the users. This image right here would represent us. This could be a PC, a tablet, or a phone where we type the websites that we want to visit. Now, when we do this, our computer would send a request to a server over the internet. The server would then verify if it can fulfill the request or if it can't. If it can, then it will send a response back to the client with uh, the needed information that you've requested. It could be an image, it could be a link or a video, but if it can't, then it will send you an error message like um, a page cannot be found or cannot establish connection to the server. An error message would sometimes look like this or this. Okay, so basically that is just the um, basic uh, representation of how a client and a server would work on a very simple network. So we have been using the terms uh, client and server, but uh, what exactly does a client and a server mean? So in computing, a client is a piece of computer hardware or software that accesses a service made available by a server. Sometimes uh, it could also be referred to as users. Clients can be uh, a PC, uh, a smartphone, a gaming console, or a tablet. Now, uh, a server is often, but not always, on a computer system that provides services to all client computers connected to it. Uh, it allows them to access available information or resources and 
it is also sometimes called as hosts. A server can run on a PC or a desktop computer, but when it comes to enterprise level businesses, uh, a computer would actually look like this. So this is what a server looks like. And as companies grow, just like on uh, the video about Facebook, the required servers also increase. So uh, these large group of network servers, just like this, they now become what we call the data centers. So a large group of network computer servers typically used by large companies and organizations. So uh, this image right here is composed uh, these are actually called cabinets, and they are composed of multiple servers on top of each other. Now, these uh, cabinets or server cabinets are located on a special location um, with specific conditions, and that's what we call a data center. Okay, now let's move on with um, the, the client server model. Okay. So a client server model looks like this. So the client server model describes uh, how a server provides resources and services to one or more clients. You could actually use uh, a comparison of a client server model with um, a topic in science. It's called the symbiotic relationships. You could remember we have uh, a couple of rela uh, symbiotic relationships. So we have uh, mutualism, we have commensalism, we have predation, parasitism, and competition. Now, uh, given these five relationships, which do you think could be compared to a client server model given or provided the definition given earlier about a uh, server and the client you could actually add an image as a clue okay so yes correct it's parasitism so if you could remember um on a para, um, parasitism one organism the predator oh i mean uh, one organism the parasite lives on or inside another organism the host so just like uh, on our model, a client would be nothing without the host or the server. Okay, so I hope uh, that uh, this analogy would somehow give you an idea or a deeper meaning with the relationship between a client and the server. Okay, moving on, of course, for you to be able to run a server, you would need an operating system specific for a server you need to have a server operating system now um, these are different from the operating systems like uh, the ones that we use on uh, on a daily basis like windows 7 and windows 10. a server os is an advanced operating system specifically designed to run on servers so these are some of the examples so we have Windows Server, uh, a server uh, OS developed by Microsoft. We have Red Hat Enterprise Linux, a popular Linux distribution OS developed by Red Hat and targets towards the commercial computer market. We also have Ubuntu OS, a popular open source OS for computers, laptops, tablets, phones, and cloud computing. Okay. Next, let us turn our modules to page six. At page six, you'll find uh, our first activity, which is the Let's Practice, and it's titled The Client and the Server. Now, in this activity, um, you will read the following statements below and then identify if it's describing a client or a server. You'll need to write a C if it's a client and S for a server. So you'll be given uh, five to 10 minutes to complete uh, this activity. So let's start.
Okay. Let's check the answers. Okay. Provide services to all client computers. That's a server. Manages access to a centralized resource or service in a network. That's also a server. Uh, also called as users. So that's a client. A piece of computer hardware or software that accesses a service made available by a server. That's also a client. And initiates requests for service. So the one that initiates request is, of course, the client or the users. Okay, let us continue. Were you able to get, uh, to, uh, get all the answers correct? If you do, then that's great. Good job. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> now, earlier, um, I've made an example uh, or I've mentioned um uh, enterprise level businesses but of course there's also the small businesses and their clients now uh of course clients require different types of services um from water services uh, electricity mobile data services and so on same thing applies with um computer servers so for clients that needs access to a specific website they need a web server. So the internet is based on web servers that responds to requests from clients such as web browser. Now for clients that need services to their mobile applications, uh, they need an application server. So for example, a weather app on your phone contacts a server for weather data. And a uh, few more examples. For clients that need a centralized storage of files, of course, they need a file server. For clients that wants to have um, a centralized management for servers, they would require a print server. Now, uh, there are quite a lot. Uh, there's actually um, a database server, a network server, DHCP server. So these are just um, some of the, the ex uh, examples that I've presented to you. Okay. Next, turn your modules to page seven. So you'll find, let's do more with the activity titled, Who Am I? Now for this activity, uh, a simple client server network is shown below. All you have to do is name each component of the network by writing a label beside each of the image, okay? Let's try and check the answers. So it's obvious. Um, these represent clients, okay? This one is called the file server. And this, the one connected to the internet would be the web server. Did everyone get the correct answer? Good job, everyone. Now, next, turn your modules to page eight. Here you'll find the next activity, which is the let's sum it up. Let's generalize what we've learned so far. All you need to do is supply the missing words on the, uh, on the paragraph to make it complete. So in a client server model, the client computer can be considered as a customer who requests blank. On the other hand, a server is similar to a service provider who serves many blank. A server or servers is normally in a centralized location, namely a blank, but we can also call it a server room or network room. It is really dependent on the server fleet. There are several types of servers. Some examples are blank server, blank server, blank server, and a blank server, each with a specific function for the network. Now, a server operating system is an advanced operating system specifically designed to run on blank. In today's cloud computing world, a variety of server OS alternatives are available for clients and companies depending on their needs. Some examples of these server OS are blank and blank 
for Linux. Okay. So let's check if you were able to get all the answers correctly. Okay. Now, for learners under difficult circumstances, such as uh, illness, areas affected by disasters, and far-flung areas, copies of the modules and other learning resources will be made available in multiple formats. We'll have them available in soft copy, hard copy. It could also be accessed online. And uh, for those that don't have access to the internet, We'll be providing downloaded videos. Just make sure to contact me or a teacher and uh, your uh, subject teachers so you can access all the learning materials that you need. Consideration for late submission of outputs and learning activity sheets will also apply, of course, given that you provide a reasonable excuse. Now, for the next activity, uh, turn your modules to the next page for the assessment. Before we end our session, please do not forget Please do not forget to ask your parents or guardians to hand in your outputs to your designated barangay clusters every Friday so that the assigned teacher can collect your completed outputs. So that's it for today's lesson. And for any questions that you may still have, feel free to send, uh, send your questions to me. Uh, you could use text, uh, Facebook Messenger, you could also call me or send me an email through the email address that I've prov uh, provided to you. So that's it for today's lesson. Thank you very much and goodbye.